For the longest time, I carried the biggest torch for you. I ripped it out of the bleeding heart of the cedar tree of Lebanon, but you know. In a treasure trove of cedar groves, there are evergreens that forever grow. Seasons change and it never shows, because these trees, they never stray, save upwards. With a bark that is etched from the marks of the stretch of striving to drip from the clouds, or feet stay parched in the earth, upwards. With needle-like leaves that are striving to teach buildings what it means to scrape the sky upwards, forward. I hurtled forward towards this forest, having too often been thrown into the throes of reckless abandon, only to find my soul trampled under souls then recklessly abandoned. Having weary of being weary of false affection and faint fealties, of distressing damsels who disdain detection, whilst in reality they came with a charm that is disarming. They told me that love is a battle, but I resigned my commission from this army. I was looking for better wars for my metaphors, so I tried to put down my pen and my pad and close for Emma's door, but I was well through. Hurt and riddled with scars, I decided to seek shelter in the seat of shade till it only hurt a little, and when the memory of present suffering had been reduced to a mere murmur in the chambers of my heart, I pronounced that I would love again, and though I st st stammered a little, I grabbed both a hammer and chisel and set to carving. I took the wood from that tree, I fashioned the good that could be, and I made a torch from it. I overlaid it with gold and placed it in my own hand to hold so that when I met you, I would have more to present to you than the mere time in my hands. So when I say that I'm carrying a torch for you, understand. I carved it out of the beating bosom of the cedar tree. I understand that with more time spent in my hands, it took on features like the fibers of my being, and I hold it out to you in the hope that I recognize you to be a woman taken from the fabric of a tree. And you are. From the way that you walk, like there is a dance bound in your brain to how even music lacks luster compared to the sound of your name. Your laugh, which is a musician's invention, or your silence, which is a mind of the world. I would that you would take some of that fire in your bed, use that passion to ignite it and see that I love you from the deep ends of my heart, but the feathers of my affection are concentrated, like a deep thought you leave me both shaking and staring. See that I would guide myself to you at an all time. The honey from the moon, because of time without you, I have surpassed my quota. So I'm ready to give you everything, every dart and every iota. I would even honor the marks on your celestial body because I understand. These aren't, these aren't scars, these are hieroglyphs. You into you, I read, and as I tune into your rhythm, I become consumed by you, my rhythm. You add color to the lights in the years of my life. So I carried a torch for you. I ripped it, I carved it, I dug it out of the bleeding bark of the cedar tree of the I took it to the great trees of Dhamma to light the path to a place where God.